All right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this Sunday uh, service uh, with your host, Dr. S.M. Chirisa and Pastor D. Chirisa. Before we start, can we open with a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you once again for this privilege to hear from you and to learn from your word. Holy Spirit, we thank you for this opportunity uh, that we are learning and feeding from your, uh, from your mind and from your word. I pray that the spirit of revelation will flow. I pray that wisdom will be dispensed. I pray that our hearts will be good soil, that when the word comes, it will uh, germinate and produce the fruit that which you sent it to do. Mm -hmm. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. Amen. Amen. Let me start by welcoming you all. I hope uh, you, you had a splendid weekend. And I uh, we would want to ask you now to share this page, like, comment, tell us where you're watching from. Uh, and you can invite your friends, your brothers, your mothers. Uh, we will also going to be speaking on something uh, uh, very important today. Just like always, every day we are bringing you fresh uh, revelation, fresh uh, anointing through the word of God. Remember what uh, Ezekiel uh, 2, 2 says, it says, I, uh, the spirit entered into me as I heard the word of God. So when you hear the word of God, the, the anointing actually increases in your life. Let me start by thanking all our, our financial partners uh, who continue to uh, support us even during this lockdown. I want to thank you. Please continue to, uh, to, to, to do so. Uh, and um, yes, and we are praying for you that God will grant you the grace to increase and to multiply. And to everybody else, thank you so much for joining and watching. Today's message is, um, is, and is titled, Senseless. 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 And so we're going to be looking at that and uh, hopefully by the end of, of the presentation, uh, you, you will gain something which is very important which is very important. So let's start uh, as we go straight into the Word of God. I cannot wait until we are able to meet. I miss you guys. I miss the live service. Uh, and um, we hope that the band, you are, you are planning something so that we can have some live music, even though we are doing it online, so that, uh, you know, we can enhance our services. All right. So when you look at the title, Senseless, um, it is very important for us to look at the uh, etymology of this word, the origins of this word. One thing that we know about this word is that this word was first used in the 1570s, uh, and it comes as um, a, a culmination or joining of two words, sense and less. And, um, and, 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 and the meaning of that word, it, it is, according to the dictionary, it means something that is Foolish. When something is senseless, it means it's something that is foolish, something that is stupid, something that is devoid of, of, of purpose or a lex intelligent or lex intelligent. The opposite of the word uh, senseless is being wise, being intelligent, being comprehensible. Uh, and so, so, so when we are talking about senseless, uh, 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 we need to understand what we are talking about. And here's the thing, and uh, uh, here's the thing that I, I wanted to say. When you look at the Bible and the stories in the Bible, when you look at them at a human academic level, uh, at a human thinking level, the stories, the Bible is full of stories that are senseless. They do not make any sense. They do not make any sense. They do not make any sense. Uh, 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 um, for example, you look at the story of creation. Two, one, one person was created, Adam, and, and then Eve was taken out of, of Adam. And then they had two, two male boys. And the boys uh, expanded and ended up having other kids. And where did the females come from? We do not have <laughs> that, uh, you know, captured in scripture. It's, it, it sounds like fiction and senseless. Uh, let's look at another story that I want. I'm going to give you three Bible stories that to me are in the human framework of thinking, of intellect. They are senseless. Let's look at Gideon in Judges 6, 7, and 8. 
Now, I want you to know that uh, the book of Judges is about a story of 15 judges of Israel. These were leaders before they were kings in Israel. And, 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 and Gideon was one of them. To me, he's probably the greatest of all the 15 that ruled Israel in that uh, dispensation. And, uh, and, and one of the ways to see that, that almost three to, th two to three chapters were dedicated to this one individual. The rest of the judges, it's usually one or even uh, sharing a, a chapter. And, and, and um, one thing about Gideon, we, we, what we know is that he comes from, he's the least, in the least, uh, he comes from the, one of the least tribes, one of the smallest tribes, and he receives a call from God to come against the Midianites. The Midianites were a huge group of nomadic people uh, that would raid and deplete the resources of the Israelites and they would target when they are about to harvest. And, uh, and, and as I speak, I want to come against the spirit of Midianites, uh, Midianites in your life that when you have labored and are about to harvest, you they come and read your harvest. Uh, that is a demonic spirit. And so, so, so God calls Gideon and says, Gideon, I want you to come against this huge group of, of these nomads. Uh, and Gideon, in his mind, in his mind, he then calls and says, he talks to the people of Israel, said, we need to go against these guys. And in his mind, he brings in 32 thousand men 32 thousand men and he was very comfortable and in my and then god says no 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 the people that you have are too many but i want you to understand that those thirty-two thousand people that gideon called were actually small compared to the midianites but god did not want to use thirty-two thousand because when you use things that are humankindly logic, uh, logical god is not necessary in that equation and so at the end, those who know the story, this, this is a, uh, a story that is shared uh, in, 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 in preschool or in Sunday school. At the end, Gideon went to war with 300 men. 300. So this is a group of 300 men that for years have not been fighting. For years they've been hiding against these nomadic people. But with, and, and these are the people that then went against a bigger army and won. It does not make any sense. It does not make any sense. It does not make any sense. One thing about the things that we see here is that God chose the small number so that we do not rely on our human intellect, but we start to rely on him. Let's look at another story. Let's look at another story that is very common, uh, the walls of Jericho. This is, we find, uh, you know, the walls of, of, of Jericho in, in Joshua uh, chapter 6 from verse 1 to 27. And uh, when you look at the archaeology of the walls of Jericho, uh, uh, we know that the walls of Jericho, they were probably built 8,000 BC or before Christ. And, and I want you to see that it were, they were not like the walls that we have in our houses or around our, our yards or our properties are uh, now. The walls of Jericho, they were, a mili they were for military purpose. It was a, a, a military weapon. It was a defensive weapon. It is estimated that the walls of Jericho, they were over four meters high. Uh, they were also over four meters wide, full of stone, stone walled, and people could actually walk, and horses could actually walk on top of those. And here comes a a nation that had been slaves. And for 40 years, they've been wo wo uh, uh, winding up uh, uh, in the wilderness. And now they have to go against this formidable force. And when they get to the formidable force, the first thing that they saw were these giant walls. These giant, uh, these walls were practically imper impermeable. You could not enter, you could not break through. They were designed specifically for that. And look, uh, and you would think that in the human uh, uh, realm, what we need are powerful uh, uh, bo uh, bombs or atomic hydrogen bombs that will release energy to dismantle these walls. But these people did not use that. In fact, what they did is they 
took the ark with the priests, went round the walls of Jericho. And after seven days, all they did was to blow some trumpets and to shout. And the walls of Jericho went down. In the realm of senses, in the realm of human intellect, that is senseless. That does not make any sense. It is foolish. Am I talking to somebody here? We can also go to the story of Paul in the New Testament. Paul in the book of Acts chapter 28 from verse 1 to 5. Paul uh, was, in a, was in a ship on his way to Rome. And while he was in that ship uh, going for trial in Rome, he was then shipwrecked. And they landed on an island called Malta. And uh, uh, on that day when they landed, it was still raining, it was cold. So they started to put in, uh, they started to make a fire while they were now gathering the sticks and they were uh, a snake, a viper. The Bible says that a viper jumped out of the fire because of the heat and, 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 um, uh, and, 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 and lunged on Paul. And the, and, 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 and the people that were on Malta then said, surely this person must be a criminal. He survived the shipwreck, but now he's been bitten by one of the most dangerous snakes on Malta. There are quite a number of snakes on Malta. If you study uh, you know, the history of Malta, there were cat vipers and all that. But the people knew that whoever is bitten by this type of snake, that they were actually expecting him to start to swell and to explode. But he did not. It does not make any sense. It's like you being bitten by a black mamba. We know the, the, the progression of what happens to you when you are bitten by a black mamba. You are bitten by a black mamba and you do not die. It does not make any sense. It's senseless. It's senseless. To the extent that when Paul does not die, the people of Malta starts to worship Paul and say that he must be a god. Because what they expected in their human intellect, in their human intelligence, did not happen. This is one of the stories that do not make any sense. And the Bible is full of, of those stories. We can go book by book. For example, we know uh, the story of, of, the, uh, of the three Hebrew boys in the book of Daniel. The Bible tells us that a furnace was made and it was heated seven times. The furnace is already hot. It already burns, but it was heated seven times. We are even told that the people that were hitting it and the people that were about to throw them, they were consumed by the fire. But there were people that were thrown into the fire and were not burnt. It does not make any sense. It's senseless. It's senseless. What about uh, 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 Peter and, and Jesus walking on water? It does not make any sense. We know according to human uh, uh, philosophy and human intelligence, for you to survive on water or to walk on water, you must, you, 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 you must overcome what is called the surface tension of water. In the, in, in the rules of physics, the reason why a mosquito can walk on water or some small insects can, walk, uh, can float on water, it is as to do they are not able to break the, 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 uh, the forces, the hydrogen forces, that are, are connecting the waters, which and, and, and that force is called the surface tension of the water. But if you, as a human, and with the force of gravity, this force of gravity is too strong for you to walk on water, so it will pull you down and will break the uh, surface tension. So that's why you sink. That's why you actually sink. So, 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 so. Naturally, you men cannot walk on water. Men can, cannot walk on water. It's senseless. It does not make any sense. Uh, in Matthew chapter 14, we know of a story of a young boy. We are not told the age, but he was a young lad who brought in his own lunch. I would suppose if he was maybe seven or eight, he's just three buns. These are not loaves. These are, not, these are just three small cakes or buns or, or five fish, little fish for a small boy's lunch. But we are then told that this lunch was able to feed 5,000 men, excluding women and children. It is estimated that the people that were there, that were fed, were over 15 to 20,000 people that were fed from a boy's lunch. It does not make any sense. It's senseless. It's foolish. So, why 
Do people who are intellectual, like myself, uh, read the Bible, believe the Bible, yet it is full of things that do not make sense, that are senseless? And here's the reason. Because there are things that do not make sense. Yes, in the realm of human intelligence, in the realm of human understanding, but they make sense in the realm of God, in the realm of faith. So it's senseless here, but it's senseful here. Am I talking to somebody? So all the stories that I have alluded to and have taken, they show us that the people were not acting in the sense realm, were not acting in the realm of human intelligence or in the realm of human thinking. They were working in another realm, in a superior realm, the realm of God and the realm of faith. Am I talking to somebody? So the Bible then says in Numbers 29 verse 19 that God is not a man. So I want us to, I want us to know and, and have, it, uh, have that strong conviction and understanding that when we are children of God, the God that we, 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 we worship, the God that we go to, he is not a natural man. He does not think in the same wavelength like you and me. He does not think in the same wavelength like your professor, like your father, or like, like anybody who is human. He is not human. The Bible goes on further to say in Isaiah 55 from verse 8 to 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts which means his thought pattern is not uh, similar. No, my way is your ways, which means the way he does things is not the way that men do things, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than yours. So God then comes and explains himself and says that the things that you think are senseless to you at your realm of thought at your realm of understanding, at your realm of reasoning, at human intelligence, at, 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 at the best professors, at Harvard level, at your yeah, Levy League University type of thinking. It, it makes no sense. It's senseless. But when, I, when you enter into my realm of thought and into my realm of ways and into my realm, they are so different as high as the heavens are from the earth. So when you come and measure what God is about to do in your life and think what God is about to do in your life and you look at the natural laws and you look at the realms of human uh, thinking and what men, uh, human limitations, human intelligence, things, you are going to say things are impossible. So all the stories that we read in the realm of men, in the realm of humans, they are impossible. Then you go into uh, Matthew chapter 16, uh, sub, uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, the, the, and Jesus is talking. He said, But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men it is impossible. I will substitute that word uh, impossible and say, With men it is senseless. But with God, all things are possible. And I will substitute that word possible and say, With, all, with God, all things are sensible. So, so one thing that you must uh, understand that when you are in, when you have decided to live a Christian, you are, as a Christian, you have also decided to enter into the realm of faith. You have, uh, you, have, you, have you, you, you will not limit your thinking. You will not limit your desires to the realm of human logic or human sense, uh, because faith will always overcome your senses. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The reason why the Bible is full of stories, or we even see in Hebrews, heroes of faith. When you read all those stories, how those guys would win, how Samson with the jawbone of an ass, with, of a donkey would defeat and kill uh, uh, well-equipped soldiers. It does not make sense, but it makes faith. So things that are senseless in the human realm, but when God says, uh, once they're done, they are sensible in the realm of faith. So there is a difference between the human realm, the natural realm, and the realm of the spirit. In this realm, seeing things that are in the realm of the spirit, they are senseless, but they, they are to the realm, for if you look them with the eyes of the natural mind. Senseless. Senseless. They are senseless. 
So I want you to understand that that you, Paul, speaking to Corinth, uh, to the Greeks at Corinth, these are people uh, by nature that were logical. These were people that loved knowledge. They, uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the Greek, the first thing that they had, they were libraries. They were, these were the first people that had libraries and they were, and they were gurus of, 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 of knowledge. Uh, up to now, there is, there, there is no a civilization that went after knowledge more than the Greeks. But Paul then writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, that, and it, it, it says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, senseless. But unto us that have been saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Verse 25, it then says, Because the foolishness of God is wiser than, is, the foolishness of God is wiser than man. So it means that if God, if it was possible for God to be foolish, it's not. Because he is omniscient. All wisdom belongs to him. Multiplex wisdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But if God the, was, if it was possible for God to be foolish, his foolishness will still be wiser than the wisest wisdom of man. So we are dealing with a being who is fathomable. Uh, uh, we cannot fathom, we cannot outthink him. Are you hearing what I'm saying, somebody? And the weakness of God is stronger than the strength of man. So I want you to understand that when you are a Christian, yes, you need to understand that when God gives you instruction, he's giving you instructions from his realm. He's giving you instructions from his wisdom. He's giving you instructions on what to do from his world. And when you judge what God is saying to you in the realm of man who is limited... It, it's senseless. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I always tell people, how can you be saved by blood? How can the blood of somebody who died more than 2,000 years ago save you? But I also ask, how do you drink milk from a cow which is white yet it eats green grass? It doesn't make any sense. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, if you go to the same chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27, it then says, But God has chosen the foolish things, the senseless things, of this world to confound the wise. So God purposely chose the things that you and me, the professors, the university will say, this is senseless, this is stupid. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when I see people of the world attacking Christianity and say, it does not make any sense, I am not moved because God chose the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. So you need to understand when you are a Christian, you are not going to be celebrated. People are going to look at you funny. People are going to look as if you are being foolish. But, you, but the question is, is God on your side? What is God saying about what you are doing? I would rather have God approve me than universities approve me. Am I talking to somebody? Now the Bible then says in the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 17, Hebrews 10 verse 28, the just shall live by faith. Let me say something here. Let me say a statement which is very crucial. When you become a Christian, you are designed to live this life by faith. And when you decide and you are designed to live by faith, and when you live by faith, you are living in the realm of senselessness in the physical and natural human realm. But in the realm of God, it is the power of God. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody here? That's why Jesus said, with God it is impossible. But to them that believe, all things are possible. Why are all things possible? Because faith is the one that moves God. It causes you to enter into the realm of God. It causes you to enter into the realm where you, you are now living above the human laws, above the natural laws. And you enter into the realm of senselessness. So all the stories that we saw, we see people who are walking by faith. So Jericho came down because of faith. The Hebrew boys did not get bent because of faith. Paul did not die because of faith. Paul walked, uh, uh, 
uh, Peter and Jesus walked on water because of faith. When you enter into the realm of faith, you are now in the realm of selflessness. Am I talking to somebody? And, and so, what I have, I, so when the Bible says, the just shall live by faith, it means that every Christian, when you are born again, your life is supposed to, to, to be a wonder. Your life is supposed to be a sign. Your, one, your life is supposed to be an expression of faith. There must be something that is impossible happening in your life. There must be a result that is impossible. There must be a result that is senseless in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And, and, and it's because you only get those senseless results. You only get those senseless uh, 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 happenings in your life in the natural realm when you start to walk by faith. So it's senseless in the human realm. It's senseless in the human intellect. It's senseless. But when it comes to the realm of faith, that is faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, 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 so. That's why Paul then says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. I can put it and say, we walk by faith and not by our senses. So he's not just talking about sight, but he's not talking about, he's not, he's talking about our senses. And our senses are the inputs into our knowledge. If you remember, when you're informed, when you're told that a scientist observes, and the scientist uses his senses. And your senses are the one that gather the intellect from your natural world. But when you are walking by faith, you ignore your natural senses. Because you are entering into a new realm, the realm of God. Where God thoughts and ways are above what your senses can phantom and understand. That's why the Bible then says in Hebrews 11 verse 3, By faith we understand that the world were framed. By the, th the things that were are seen, the things that are seen were formed by things that are unseen. You cannot understand that by human intellect. You can understand it by faith. Am I talking to somebody here? So hear this. Your life, in your life, you must always have something that is senseless. You must always have something that you are believing God for. You must always have, you must always having, you must always be having something that you are going after, which does not make any sense. When you tell it to your professors, they'll say it's impossible. When you tell it to your wife, they'll tell you it can't. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There must always be a project that is senseless. There must always be something that is senseless. Never as a Christian have be or have a time when everything is logically possible. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There must always, you must always have one thing. You must always have some things. You must always have some things that you are believing for that are, are senseless. Because when you are walking in the realm of senseless, according to human uh, 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 intelligence, you are walking in the realm of faith. And faith is senseless to humans. I would rather live in the realm of senseless. I am a man of wisdom. I am a man of high intellect. But always, I ensure that in my life, I'm, I always have a project. I always have something that only God can do. That if I don't believe God, if I don't trust God, that will not happen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I always have something that I'm believing God for. So the things that you are seeing around us is a result of senseless things in the human realm but they make sense in the realm of faith. The things that are happening, our future is not designed by things that are possible in the human realm, but things that are impossible in that realm. But when I enter into the realm of faith, we are pulling things that are impossible. We are framing worlds that we never thought we would become. We are building this thing. We are building the wisdom city. We are building the wisdom temple. We are building those hospitals. What am I talking about? I'm talking about walking in faith. It's senseless in the human intellect. But God is looking for people that are not going to make sense. But God is looking for people that are going to make faith. Am I talking to somebody? So my prayer for you is that you may be bold enough to walk into things, to start to believe God for things that are impossible according to your human capacity and ability. 
Am I talking to somebody? Don't just do things that are possible with your, with your capacity. Don't just do things. Don't just go for things that are possible with your talents and your gifts. God wants you to go for things that are beyond your capacity. God is a God who longs to be believed. God is a God who longs for people to believe him. Because when you believe him, you unlock the power of God. That's why the Bible says that this is the victory that overcomes the world. The world systems, the world's ways of doing things, the world intelligence. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So without faith, you will never see the glory and miracles happening in your life. And the miracles happen when you enter into the realm of senselessness in the natural realm. So I always want to live in the realm of things that do not make sense. So when I speak sometimes, I speak things that do not make sense. I speak things that people will start to say, I think this guy is, has lost it. No, I have not lost it. I'm speaking faith. So faith speaks. So I want you to see uh, what Caleb uh, and Joshua did. The reason why they, they survived when the 12 spies were sent by Moses to go and, 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 and spy the land that flowed with milk and honey. They are the only two that came back and said, we are well able to overcome. Let's go immediately. The other 10 said, no, we are like grass whispers in our own sight and also in their sight. And all of them who did and who believed what they saw in the realm of human intellect, they perished. You never reach your goal. But they who were walking and seeing with the realm and the spectacles of faith, they said, we are well able, beyond their capacity. And even Caleb said, give me that mountain. And before he died, he had conquered his mountain. So your mountain can be conquered, but you can only conquer it when you, as you start to operate by faith. There are things that you can do, and there are things that you can do naturally. Those ones, you don't need faith. Do them naturally, but you must always have a project. You must always have an issue. You must always have a nyaya. You must always be doing something that requires you to have faith in God. If you are going to see miracles happening in this day, you must be willing and be bold enough to look at something, to look at a project that in the human world it's impossible. In your natural talent it's impossible. In your, in your ability to generate income it's impossible. But all things are possible in the realm of faith. It is senseless. But I would rather live in the realm of senseless and live in the realm of faith. I pray that God may strengthen your faith. I pray that you may be bold enough to walk in the realm of senselessness in this world, but senseful to God. In Jesus' name, I pray. See you next week. Amen.